Okay, first of all, uh, let, uh, let me tell you what. We are having a plan for these five months for these all level students. So this is actually a class that I have started uh, per request of a student only, right? Some group of students, they requested to have the paper class for history. So uh, one thing I'll tell you, if there are students from grade nine who are planning to promote to grade 10 or who are grade 10 students, uh, I think it's better, it's not the session for you all. The session is for grade 11 students, right? I have to tell that the first thing because this is like a fast track session, right? This is the session that I have completely dedicated for grade 11 students who are planning to sit for the all level exam, coming all level exam, right? Uh, that may be in February or March, we don't know, but for them only, right? Because in this session, my plan is to cover the lessons through a revision and also to discuss the classified past paper questions related to those particular lessons. Now, earlier I had a plan before I start this session, my plan was to do the full papers, but then some students, they messaged me and they told me some, they, some of them have not covered the lessons yet. Some lessons are still pending. So what I planned was to do the lesson and then to cover all the classified questions of that particular lesson, okay? So another thing I want to tell you, you don't want to write any notes here, right? Notes are boring, you don't need to write notes. I'm explaining you this history as a story, right? You have to just keep quiet and listen carefully without doing any work. Your concentration should be completely focused onto the subject. That is my kind request. Okay. If you love the subject only, you can understand it also. Right. There are nine subjects for your level. I know that most of the students, they are, they are very lazy to study history because it's really boring for you all. But it's okay. But if somebody is teaching you all, you can listen and keep it in your mind as a story. After I finish the explanation of the lesson, I'll be going to past paper classified questions and some of the model paper questions released, released by the uh, examination department also. Clear? In that session only, in that part of the session only, you will have to take a book and a, a pencil and a pen and write the things, answers. Can you understand? And while I am explaining the lessons, if you get any question, Note down them and keep. I'll give you a time to ask questions, right? Uh, don't interrupt me while I'm explaining because I lost the flow, okay? So if you have any question, keep it with you. And when I ask you whether you have any question, then you put it to the chat box so you can unmute and ask, right? So now let's start the lesson. First, I'm going to start the grade 10 lesson number one, sources of studying history. Okay, now, what are sources? First of all, that will be the question you can get from this lesson. What are sources? Listen carefully. History is a subject like a story. We are studying the, uh, certain activities done by past, the people who lived in the past, our ancestors. Every one of us are having, personally, we have our own history. Can you understand? We all have our own history. Sometimes one day when you grow up and when you talk, talk about your history, sometimes it's maybe you, you enjoy that, you enjoy those stories, the activities, what you did. Similarly, we also have to understand how we came to this world. What, who were the people who lived before us? What did they do for their survival? Did they have technology like this? Uh, did they live like us? Did they have all the facilities what we have now? Likewise, you get hundreds and thousands of questions. So this history is a subject which clears all the past human activities. So when you study history, you have to go back to thousands of years, you have to go back and your whole soul should get into that period and you have to explore everything, right? Now, most of the archeologists, they are doing their researches to find about the history of man right, history of man. They're still doing, though you are learning about the archeological things about in this book, they are still finding about the uh, human existence when it started and all, right? There are various things that they have found to prove that man has been existing from long years back. It's not today or yesterday. Thousand years back, man has been existing. 
So the things what they have found to prove the existence of human is called as the sources, the writings, the creations made by people who lived earlier. They are called as sources. Certain creations found in those ages. Can you understand? So due to these sources only, we get the information about the activities done by the humans who lived earlier. Those sources are helping us to get the information about their day-to-day -day life, about their activities. For example, I'll tell you a simple thing. If you want to know about your father's or mother's past stories, what you do, maybe you keep them and you ask their stories. Just suppose, just think if they have a habit of writing a diary and you found that diary, you will be very excited to read it and know what's, what did they do, how did they spend their school life, what, what are their secrets, like that. You're like excited to read it. Diary is a source for you to know about your parents' history in that case. Like that, there were writings, there were inscriptions, pillars, and all these many, many, many other things to find about the history of the past humans, right? So these sources are very helpful for understanding the activities of earlier people, their uh, social backgrounds, their cultures, all the informations are included in those sources. That is about sources. So there are two main types of sources. Listen very carefully. There are two main types of sources. One is the literary sources and other is the archaeological sources. So let's listen. What is literary source? Right. Literary sources are the written documents. Literary. You know the word literary is always about the writings. So these literary sources are about the written documents. Right, maybe the books, maybe some, uh, what we call that, you know, in all the leaves and all they write, those things and all. So, literary sources are, again, classified into two parts. Listen carefully, now draw a flowchart in your mind. Okay, sources are two types, literary sources and archaeological sources. Literary sources are written documents. They are classified again into local literary sources and foreign literary sources. Okay, so if we talk about the literary sources, most of these literary sources have been helpful to study the history of Sri Lanka, our country, to study the history of our country, literary sources have been helpful. Local literary sources means certain text, certain writings, right? Certain writings, maybe the poems, maybe the prose, stories, maybe all the writings belong to literary sources. So archeologists, they have find that some literary sources are more than, you know, more than 2000 years old, right? Other than that, there are some uh, sources called as foreign literary sources. Foreign literary sources are the books written by the foreigners who visited our country or else the foreigners who heard about our country. They are impressed about our country and they have in, written some books including the informations. Those are called as the foreign literary sources, right? So I told you that local literary sources are the sources mentioning about the Sri Lankan history. So example is, the best example is Mahavamsa and the Deepavamsa, right? Now, among all these local literary sources found in Sri Lanka, Deepavamsa is considered as the oldest one, oldest text, okay? Because this Deepavamsa, it was written during the 4th century. Now we are living in the 21st century. So this Deepavamsa is written in 4th century. So it consists almost all about the histo history of our country, right? Up to the end of King Mahasen's ruling period, everything is included in this Deepavamsa book, right? Other than that, Mahavamsa. Mahavamsa is also something similar to Deepavamsa. Mahavamsa is actually consisting many parts. Many parts are there. So some parts were written by some people, the other parts were written by other somebody like that. They have find not the same person have written the book. Can you understand? So this is a question, a very important question that they can ask you. Who wrote the first part of Mahavamsa? 
first part of Mahavamsa was written by a bhikkhu who was named as Mahanama. Mahanama there only wrote the first part of the Mahavamsa. Yes. So uh, there was a question in a model paper. Where did Mahanama Thero live? So actually, how to remember these places? Now, don't think these names are difficult names. Just think it as a movie and remember. There was a person called Mahanama Thero. He was the person who wrote the first part of Mahavamsa. He lived in Dixanda Senavia Pirivena. That is the monastery. Dixanda Senavia Pirivena. Okay. Another thing is, uh, like in Deepavamsa, in the first part of Mahavamsa also, they, they have written the same information of our country. How Lord Buddha arrived to Sri Lanka, uh, how Mahasen, uh, King, King Mahasen ruled the end of that period. All these same things in Mahavamsa and Deepavamsa are similar. Uh, they say that Deepavamsa was written in the 4th century and that's why it is considered as the oldest text. Mahavamsa, it was written during 5th or 6th century only. Okay, but when you read both the books, you can see some similar things are there. Because most of the writers who wrote Mahavamsa and the Deepavamsa, they referred some books and they wrote. Now here see, what were the other texts belong to local literary sources? So these books were helpful for the Theros or people who, who wrote the Mahavamsa and Deepavamsa. What are those books? Now, revise, like, you know, read it while I am reading. This is your study time, okay? Because now I know that most of the students are packed with online classes. Even we are like that. So, you don't have time to study separately. So, always remember your class is your studying time. When I am repeating, you also repeat. When I am reading, you also read it, right? What are the books now? Sihala Atakata Mahavamsa. Uttara Vihara Atakata and Vinaya uh, Atakata. Okay, now see three things I read here, not everything from here. Sihala Atakata Mahavamsa, Uttara Vihara Atakata, Vinaya Atakata. Right, these three things, these three books were written before Mahavamsa and Deepavamsa. Before these two sources only, these three books were written. But it doesn't consist like much detail, but they have gathered the details from these books from these literary sources, right? So after Mahanama Thero, after Mahanama Thero write the first part of Mahavamsa, other writers, other writers who lived after Mahanama Thero, they continued this book. They included other informations about, the, uh, about their period, right? They included the history of Sri Lanka. So they became responsible to continuously write Mahavamsa. Right. So the history of Sri Lanka is well said in Mahavamsa and Deepavamsa also. Just all the historical events are recorded in those sources. Can you understand? So the annotation. Now see, another thing is the annotation of Mahavamsa. This is also important for you to remember. They can ask this name. Right, that Mahavamsa Tikava's name, one Satta Pakkasini. So, annotation of Mahavamsa is known as the Mahavamsa Tikava. So, this Mahavamsa Tikava, it also consists many informations which are not available in other literary sources. So, that's why the, the people who are finding about all these things, they understood that all these literary sources are important. Because every literary source is giving information related to different periods. They have not compiled all the story into one book. They, they couldn't do that. So they, uh, they tried to uh, renew several other books, several other literary sources, and they wrote whatever the information that they heard and that they knew. Right? So this annotation of Mahavamsa is another text which consists more information about the country which are not available in the other sources what I told you. Okay, right. Now, what did I teach you? What are sources? Sources are two types, literary sources and archaeological sources. Literary sources are written documents. There are two types, local literary sources and foreign literary sources. I taught you local literary sources and still not finished. Now, other than Mahavamsa, Deepavamsa, and Sihal Atakatava, Uttravahar Atakatava, and Vinay Atakatava, there are some other books also. 
Now listen those things. Here, Sandesha Kavya, Prashasti Kavya and Hatan Kavya. So these, these are also few other types of literary sources which consist the stories of different other eras, right? Now you will detailly learn what kind of informations are included. Now listen carefully. There are a number of books now here. Mayura, Tissara, Salalihini, Tarakumba, like that. Many books are here. Local literature source books are here. So there are a set of books written from Anuradhapura era to Kandyan era. There are some books written about the and Anuradhapura era to Kandyan era. So in those books, it consists of the history of our country, existed in our country from Anuradhapura era to Kandyan era. Remember the names of those books, right? Now listen, those books are uh, here, History of Rajarata Civilization and to learn the Buddhist religion. Those books consist mainly about the Buddhist religion. Bodhi Vamsa, Tupa Vamsa, Datu Vamsa, Pujavali, Saddharma Lankare. How can they give this to a question? They can ask you out of the following, which is a book that belongs to Anuradhapura era. They can give you some examples of Gampala to Porte period. The literary sources belonging to Gampala to Porte period also. Can you understand? So there we get a confusion. That's why when you are learning, learn it to a rhythm, learn it to a pattern. Then that pattern will be saved in your mind. Right? So remember, Anuradhapura era to Kandyan era, there were some books which were considered as Buddhist religious books. Okay? Those books were Bodhivamsa, Topavamsa, Datuvamsa, Pujavaliya, and Saddharma Lankaraya. Five books. So, Bodhivamsa, Topavamsa, Datuvamsa, they are kind of rhyming. Try to remember. Pujavaliya and Saddharma Lankaraya. Two different. Right? So, remember these five books belonging to Anuradhapura era to Kandyan era, consisting of the Buddhist religion. Consisting of the Buddhist religion. Right? Now, let's go to the next part. History of Gampola to Kote period. I told you now, Anuradhapura to Kandyan period, five books were there. All books were Buddhist religious texts. Now, from Gampola to Kote period, there were some other books. What are they? They are Nikaya Sangrahaya and Raja Vali. Now, earlier I told you some books, they were very important to learn about the Buddhist religion and also the Rajarata civilization. Now, history of the other, I mean, political types, political informations, we can get from these books, Gampala to Korte period. What are those? Nikaya Sangrahaya and Raja Vali. Remember, these two books are explaining about the Gampola period to Korte period. Then, if anyone need to learn about the Korte era, Korte period to Kandyan period, early I told you some other literary sources. Sandesha Kavya, Prashasti Kavya, and Hatan Kavya. Remember, Sandesha Kavya books are Mayura Sandesha, Tisara Sandesha, Salalihini Sandesha. Mayura, Tisara, Salalihini. They are the Sandesha Kavya. Prashasti Kavya are Parakumba spirit, only one. Hatan Kavya. Hatan means woe, fights, no. Sita Vaka Hatan. Constantine and Hatan. English Hatan. They are, those books are uh, talking about the uh, wars that has occurred, right? And how, what kind of a political influence was there? Now, remember the three types of books for Kote era to Kandyan era. Sandesha Kavya, Prashasti Kavya, and Hatan Kavya are the three books. Okay, now, before I go into the foreign literary sources, I'll tell you a small revising again from what are sources. Sources are two types, literary sources and archaeological sources. Literary sources are two types, local and foreign. We have discussed what are sources, literary sources, local literary sources. Now we are going to move into the foreign literary sources. Right. The next one is foreign literary sources. Now listen carefully. Everything should be a picture in your mind. If not, if you just get distracted, can't. Right. Okay. 
foreign literary sources if we talk about the foreign literary sources i told you that these sources are not written by the sri lankans most of the foreign literary sources are written by the foreigners who visited our country who heard about our country and they have written books on our country so we can't tell 100% true all these literary sources we can't say 100% true because they wrote what they saw what they heard like that right so sri lanka is maintaining trade relationship with foreign countries from earlier time right they had a habit of maintaining this trade relationship Can you understand? Then, uh, when foreigners came to trade activities in the Indian Ocean, they understood that there is a nice small island called Sri Lanka. Then foreigners they came to visit our country and they did trade activities and all those things, right? So foreigners start to research about our country and they wrote whatever they heard, whatever they saw, and they made some books, including the information of our country. so what you understand from here is sri lanka had a good close relationship with india from the beginning so you have to remember the indian books which gave information about sri lanka so one of the indian tamil books called as seela padikaram manimehalai and padiru paat they were written in india now look at this one seela padikaram manimehalai and padiru paat definitely you can remember this it's tamil name if they give it to mcq even you should be able to recognize that it is a indian book in those two tamil books they have mentioned about sri lanka right so some foreigners they wrote books separately separately to include information about sri lanka and that started with the arrival of portuguese so portuguese came to sri lanka in the 16th century now see how much of a gap is there mahavamsa deepavamsa were written in 4th 5th and 6th centuries portuguese came to our country in the 16th century so they also started to explore about our country and some of the people who came who were writers they started to write about our country also but some writers they didn't come to our country they heard information they collected from the people who visited our country and they started to imagine and write information can you understand so we'll see what are the other books i told you india is our neighbor country so definitely we had a good close relationship the books were seela padihara manimehalai and padiru paatte other books like chinese sources arabian sources portuguese sources let's see chinese sources are fahi and teros traveling accounts fahi and teros traveling accounts now listen Fahi and Tero was a Chinese monk. That's why we call him as a Tero. He came to India by walking. Can you imagine? He came to India by walking to search about the Buddhism. He wanted to explore about the religion Buddhism. So Fahi and Tero came to Sri Lanka in the fifth century, and he stayed in Anuradhapura Mahavihara for two years. He spent his time there. can you understand for two years so he was a born chinese he came to sri lanka in search of buddhism then when he was spending his time in sri lanka for two years whatever he learned about our country and whatever the things existed in that country during that period are included in his traveling accounts that's why we call as fahi and tero's traveling accounts right the other chinese sources the book on records of tours of hyusan tasan tero okay now listen this tero is also a chinese he he was also a monk chinese monk right he came to india as a pilgrimage only as on pilgrimage only he came to our country uh, for india right he came to india then he started to get information about the countries around asia but he didn't come to sri lanka he just recorded whatever he heard about our country whatever he learned about our country when he was settling in india so those informations are very important to study the uh, history of our country from 7th century right so you can understand for each century this each source is important right remember the two chinese books Arabian sources. 
when you come to arabian sources you should remember ibn battuta's traveling accounts ibn battuta is really a famous traveler right so his books are consisting the informations related to sri lanka when he came on travel right that is another important book remember ibn battuta's traveling account then portuguese sources now what are the sources we learned little by little indian books chinese sources arabian sources indian sources are silapadihara manimehale padiru part chinese sources fahian tero's traveling accounts and the book on hewson tero right arabian sources are ibn battuta's traveling accounts then now we are moving into portuguese sources portuguese sources are ribeiro's books on sri lanka and the book on sri lanka by father pernaro queiro okay right so portuguese sources are uh, ribeiro's books on sri lanka and the book on sri lanka by father pernaro queiro so if we talk about the uh, father uh, sorry ribeiro's books ribeiro was a portuguese right he was a portuguese and in march 1640 he came to sri lanka now imagine a portugal person right a portuguese person coming to sri lanka and he came to serve the portuguese army he came to serve the portuguese army then he got the position of the captain in his army by staying 18 years in sri lanka so 18 years is really a long time right 18 years is a really long time and he served the army portuguese army by settling in sri lanka so when he was in his old age he started to write several books about sri lanka right he started to write several books about sri lanka because he lived there for 18 years so those books are really very important to study the history of sri lanka of the 17th century i told you that each century each person's book is very important fahi and tero's books are important for learning about 5th century this ribeiro's books are important learn about 17th century right and the next portuguese book is the book on sri lanka by father pernaro queiro so father pernaro queiro also was a portuguese and he wrote books on sri lanka about, on his experience right then the next one holland sources Holland is the capital city of the Dutch. Portugal is the capital city of the Portuguese. So Holland sources are belonging to the Dutch people. So one of the Holland sources found is the books of Philippus Baldus. Books of Philippus Baldus. So Philippus Baldus was a Dutch priest. Now listen, Fahian Tero and Hewson Tan Tero was Chinese. They were Chinese monks, and Philippus Baldus was a Dutch monk. He also came to Sri Lanka with the Dutch army people, right? And his duty was to serve the East India Trade Company. Now I told you, Ribeiro he came with the Portuguese army and he served their army people. Philippus Baldus also came to Sri Lanka and he served the uh, their army people, right? The East Indian Trade Company people. so when he was doing all these activities he learned about sri lanka he understood the social life he understood about our language our culture everything whatever he got to know he published them into some records into some books right and you understand so those sources what were written by philippus baldus they were also very important to learn about our country's history in the 17th century 17th century stories are included in Philippus Baldus books also not only his Ribeiro's books are also consisting those things can you understand so now listen what what are the things we learned foreign literary sources indian books chinese sources arabian sources portuguese sources holland sources remember them and revise them again and again now english sources what are the english sources english means british okay british people wrote one robert knox book eda hela diva this is a very famous book robert knox was an english naval captain right ribeiro he became the captain for the portuguese army 
robert knox is the captain of the english naval english army right so he came to india by a ship with his father when he was 14 years old now imagine a 14 years old boy, boy coming with his father in the ship to india right and in 1658 when they were sailing to persia he came to sri lanka on 19th november 1659 by accidentally right because their ship was broken and they came to sri lanka because most of the people they don't know a country called sri lanka it's a very small island right most people come for ex- as explorers or for some other purpose or and they get to know the value of our country so in that occasion robert knox and other 16 people they were in the ship and they were arrested by raja singha too why were they arrested because they crossed the border maybe because of that because we have doubts right we can't assure no who are they maybe they have come to capture our country and all so they were arrested by king raja singha too and what were, what was the punishment 19 years they were present in sri lanka afterwards they escaped 19 years king raja singha too punished them and then they escaped so this robert knox he went to mana and then ex- escaped to the batavaya right so when he was staying all these 19 years when he was going back to his way to that country when he was escaping only he was writing this book he was writing about the experiences that he had in sri lanka maybe it's really interesting because his own experience is right in that so this book was published in 1681 in the name of an historical relation of the island of ceylon historical relation of the island of ceylon so who wrote this book robert knox they can ask you in two ways who wrote the book the historical relation of the island of ceylon they can ask you who wrote the book eda heladiva so it was written by a portuguese that is robert knox so this book which was written by him consisting his own experience is revealing the stories of 17th century right because he stayed in this country for 19 years right that is one of the english not portuguese he is english british right next one is the roman sources what are the roman sources naturalis historia by pilni and approach to geography by ptolemy so you know all know the ptolemy he was the person who drew the world map so these two books are belonging to the uh, roman sources okay roman sources and the next one next foreign literary source is the greek sources what are the greek sources dimundu by aristotle istika by megasthenes dimundu by aristotle and istika by megasthenes now repeat these things again and again like you know like a poem repeat them foreign literary sources what are the foreign literary sources indian books chinese sources arabian sources portuguese sources holland sources english roman greek and those sources are there remember each book one by one for their category if you repeat if you read this two to three times automatically you can just save it in your mind right now archaeological sources is the second main type of source right now archaeological sources also we can divide into categories literary sources are classified into local literary sources and foreign literary sources likewise archaeological sources are classified into epigraphy coins ruins drawings sculptures and antiques right let's talk about these things one by one first of all if they ask you what are archaeological sources now this can come into us um, you know part two type main question they can ask how can they ask they can ask you explain the sources and their types they can give six marks so you have to explain briefly you have to give a description sources means this there are two main types that they are this local and archaeological local are two types explain one is uh, the uh, local literary sources and archaeological sources 
explain them into uh, two types categories all the categories explain you examples of the books and whatever you know maximum you write it there right don't write a lot more than for six marks don't write just write it for six mark question right so when we come for archaeological sources epigraphy is the first thing that we have now all the points i have given briefly here epigraphy means the certain writings the certain writings on stones we call them as shilalipi or sellipi so these are very common question okay what are shilalipi what are sellipi sellipi is local literary sources so archaeological sources like that they can ask you so they are archaeological sources so this epigraphy means they are telling about the writings on stones writings on clay slabs writings on the walls okay writings on the copper plates the golden plates on woods on urns urns means certain pots and other tools and all right other stuffs what you can use for kitchen uh, stuff and all whatever the pots what they have used right other than that the writing on slabs and the writing on the rocks we call them as sellipi or shilalipi remember the name okay so what are epigraphy epigraphy means writings on stones clay slabs walls copper plates golden plates wood and urns okay now look at this one writings on stone shilalipi writings on the clay slabs we can say the scripts written on the tiles and bricks so they have found that some people they have written certain things on the tiles and on bricks so maybe you all you all also have written different different things in your uh, school washroom toilets on your desk and on the walls so one day they are going to be historical sources right they are going to be historical sources so like that those people also have written certain things now they are archaeological sources we are learning about them now right walls the graffiti in sigiriya so Uh, when king kashyap uh, he never thought that whatever the writing whatever the drawings he drew, do there are going to be historical he never thought that but now finally we have learned how what kind of a knowledge on painting drawing and what kind of a skill they had we can understand by looking onto those copper plates panakadu copper plate of king vijayabahu one now panakadu copper plate was written by king vijayabahu one and this was written by the order of king vijayabahu he only ordered the reason is uh, this panakadu copper plate it was given to an officer who was named as sit narubiba budalna remember his name they can ask you to whom did king vijayabahu offered the panakadu copper plate it was offered to an officer named sit narubima budalna so why did he give this copper plate to him the reason is he want to pay the gratitude for the loyalty that he was that he was he was really loyal to the king and as a result only vijayabahu king vijayabahu offered this panakadu copper plate to that officer right so that picture is given to you in page number 5 remember the picture now the government has printed you pictures here not to enjoy and entertain to look and learn them when when you see them one day you should be able to tell ah this is the panakadu copper plate okay this is the galputa inscription if you know that only you can have an idea about the history of our country right so this panakadu copper plate they can give to you give it to your part b type paper and they can ask five questions from that who gave it right what is this called as who was uh, who was uh, uh, who was the person who got this what is the reason for him to get it like that they can ask you few questions related to that particular picture so you will say oh, i remember this picture was there in the left hand side of the book in the top part i remember but in the bottom some small letters were there now i can't remember no answers like that definitely you have remember if you show your full concentration on to the lesson you can remember panakadu copper plate right another thing is the golden plate vallipuram golden plate remember panakadu copper plate is by king vijayabahu one next one is vallipuram golden plate okay the wood some writings were written on the wood now 
there are some children they used to carve their names and all in the wood and all in their school on the trees on the desk and all they carve so, so they won't destroy actually for a few years even they won't destroy like that the archaeologists they have found that some people in the ancient time they have carved something they have done some writings on the woods also so one of that uh, source what they have found is the uh, in the ambakka devalaya in the ambakka devalaya they have found some wood sculpturings also right other thing is the various urn scripts written on pots and begging bowls they were there were some writings in the pots and also in the bowls they have written different things and they have found that they were used in the ancient period and archaeologists were able to collect information about our country by looking at all these epigraphy also so if they ask you what are the epigraphies you can give writings on stones clay slabs walls copper plate golden plate wood and various urns remember these things okay the second type of archaeological sources is inscriptions inscriptions are called as the cell lipi inscriptions are called as cell lipi so according to the shape of the stone where are the ancient people they have written the things we can categorize these inscriptions into different ways for example if they have done any writings on the caves we can call them as the cave inscriptions okay if they have written on the rocks we call them as the rock inscriptions in other words giri lipi rock inscription means giri lipi if they have written on the piles we call them as the tam lipi remember tam lipi okay remember these names here see cave inscriptions rock inscriptions are giri lipi pile inscriptions are tam lipi slab inscriptions are puvaru slab means puvaru puvaru lipi the seat seat means in singhala we say asana so asana lipi brahmi inscriptions were the oldest inscriptions which was found oldest inscription in those brahmi inscriptions they have mentioned about offering caves to the Uh, what we call the bikkus offering caves to bikkus other thing king nisankamalla's galpotha inscription look at page number 5 on the top figure number 1.3 galpotha inscription is there so this was made by king kirti sri nisankamalla and you can find this in polonnaru so after all this pandemic situation over one day definitely go to these places and visit Now, usually when we were schooling we were taken for you know the school trips and all because it's educational trip they target the science and history subjects and they take us and we we saw all these things they were really interesting you also have to see one day like uh, definitely try to see this when you see them all you can keep them in your mind right so this is galpotha inscription you will see it like a big stone and they call it as galpotha because on that stone they have written they have written from another language maybe pali or something they have written some information and it was made by king kirti sri nisanka malla right other than that the coins coins are also now inscriptions are very important those inscriptions are helpful to study about the history of the ancient society in our country right so this inscription the writing inscription was started from the second century from the second century they started can you understand so they have mentioned about various things various things in our country for example how the temples were started how they started to build the temples how the government started how they gave the uh, laws and all right uh, then they can tell the taxes the uh, what we call the other rules and regulations the how they punish the people how they forgive the people all these informations are given in the uh, inscriptions right so inscriptions are important when we are studying about the archaeological sources other than that we can understand to learn about the coins the coins also 
Next, let's go into the next part that is the coins. Now I told you archaeological sources are epigraphy and inscription. And the next thing is coins. So coins were also used in Sri Lanka. Not only nowadays, early also they had a very good place for coins. So these coins were used in Sri Lanka from the Anuradhapura period. So they can ask you what was the oldest coin found in Sri Lanka. So the oldest coin found in Sri Lanka is called as the Kahapana. Now remember these new names. You learned many, many new names. Kahapana is considered as the oldest coin. In other words, we can call it as Purana, Dharana. Okay, those names are also used. Kahapana, Purana and Dharana. So Purana means like ancient. Maybe they have given the names according to the way that they have found. Those are the oldest coins. Other than that, there was another coin that the archaeologists have found, a coin which consists a tusker and swastika. You know the swastika sign, right? Something like this. I'm not something sure like this, but something like So with the tusker and the swastika, they have found a coin also. Okay. And another golden coin was found known as Akka. What is it? Akka. Oldest coin is Kahapana, Purana, or Dharana. Other coin is Tusker and Swastika. And another coin that is the golden coin. Okay, so uh, golden coin and Lakshmi coins. We call them another type of coins are there, Lakshmi coins. So these coins were found in our country. So that means we can have an idea. The ancient people, they have done this trade transactions they have deal with the coin they have deal with money matters okay other type is the tamba massa now look at this tamba massa means the copper tamba means copper in singhala so copper coins were also found copper coins were also found right so all these coins were used during the polonnaruwa period okay the coins needed for the country were produced in the country itself. Yes, nowadays also, if we need any money matters, we produce it in our own country. So earlier also, there was a technology that the people, they were able to prepare the coins of our country in the country itself. So see how that's a really a good thing, right? They are producing the country in our country itself, right? So they mold the coins and they produce them. Can you understand? Yes, there is a picture. There is a picture of a coin in your book as well uh, in page number six. So this coin used in Sri Lanka has been made of gold and it is called the medieval golden coins. Okay, and these coins are source which help to study not only the ancient economy, but also the technology. So they had a knowledge of molding coins also. And they had a knowledge of doing trade transactions as well. So you can see different symbols are used in that coin. So you, not only this one, children, when you go to uh, yeah, Columbo Museum, okay, in Columbo Museum, you have different kinds of coins. They have kept it nicely. One day you have to visit those places and you have to gather your knowledge, you have to improve the knowledge. Don't ever think what's the use of studying history, what subject are we going to use this Definitely that thought is coming for an all of our student, but you need them, right? When you become somebody, definitely you should know about your mother country. Haven't you all seen how many celebrities, how many, you know, these fan people, like they don't nothing about our country. Some people, they really don't know anything, but they just become famous and all. It's very shame. You should know everything and put your knowledge, whatever you know, at the right time. Keep everything with you, right? Uh, always a genius fellow will be silent. They know when and where they should express their knowledge, right? So you have to know everything and be like, you know, nothing. That's all. Okay, know everything and be like nothing. Love all the nine subjects and target all the nine subjects together. If you want to pass this all level, you have to take all these nine subjects together with you if you like it or not. Can you understand? Right. So after coins, uh, there's another important point. This was a question in the past papers. Listen, study of, st study of ancient coin is known as numismatic. They asked the question um, out of the following, what is something study of coins regarding to that? Uh, in the answers only, they had given the numismatic thing. So numismatic means the study of coins. It's If there is 
certain set of group of people who are researching about these coins, about the source of coins, they are called as the numismatics, right? Now, in under archaeological sources, I taught you epigraphy, inscriptions, and coins. Okay, now we are going into the ancient ruins. Ancient ruins. Ancient ruins are the buildings, the stupas, stone pillars, tanks, ponds, all these things are coming under the ancient ruins. What are they? Old buildings, old stupas, the stone pillars, the tanks, ponds, all are coming under these ancient ruins. So the ancient people, they have made these things. These ruins means the leftover things after long years, they become ruins. So these monuments, these ruins, are very important sources to study the history of a country. That's why even nowadays, when the ruins are getting uh, damaged, governments take steps to improve them and uh, you know, to protect them. They, they rebuild them. When they are getting more and more damaged, they rebuild them and keep it safe because they are very important. They, that shows that our country was an old country. We had relationship with the foreign countries. So all those are supportive information. And, you understand? and that is the reason we can collect the tourism. Tourist people, they come from uh, they come from their countries to visit these things, to look at these things and to learn about these things. There are some people who uh, came to Buddhist religion by observing all this. They believed Buddhism is the first religion and they uh, accepted the religion. They believe that uh, who, uh, Lord Buddha came to our country. So all these things are advantages to Sri Lanka. We can earn the tourism, we can, uh, you know, spread the national religion. Likewise, they have the certain motivation. That's why we protect all these things. And they are very important and good sources to study about our country. So these ruins should be protected. They help to gain the knowledge about various things about our ancestors, the creative thinking ability they had, the technological knowledge they had, the designing knowledge they had. Nowadays, if we want to become an architect, you know, we should learn. But earlier, they had that knowledge. They had it from their, you know, from their body itself, right? They had all the talents, water management systems, the crafting systems, everything they knew. They had a good knowledge on technology to prove that ancient ruins are important, okay? And the next one is the drawings, sculptures, and antiques. So these drawings, sculptures, and antiques are discussed under a separate topic in your book. So listen very carefully. Now, the ancient drawings, sculptures, and... Okay, ancient drawings, sculptures, and engravings, these are very live evidence. We can show our culture. We can uh, show the sculptures. They were uh, they show that talent that they had for drawing, the uh, ancient knowledge that they had about the clothes, the art skills, the things what they wore, the jewelries, the colors, the religions what they had. Everything is proved here. For example, we'll take the Sigiriya frescoes. So Sigiriya frescoes are giving a very vast information about the clothes, about the jewelry, their hairstyles, the beauty of the women, the culture they had. All these, these things are learned from this by looking all these uh, cultures, uh, sorry, drawings in the Sigiriya wall, right? Other than that, certain remainings are found. You know, in the ancient period, there were certain remainings found, maybe some pots, maybe maybe some other things what they have made using their knowledge on technology. So those remains also very important to learn about the history of Sri Lanka. So nowadays, those remains are kept in the museums and all, right? You can go and observe those things as well. So when you look at them, you will be able to understand the different aspects the people had, the ancient people had, their abilities, their skills, their knowledge, everything is well proved in this. Uh, drawings, sculptures, and antiques, clear? And another thing, the uses of literary sources. What are the uses of literary sources? Now see, now you may be thinking, is this a question even? But they have asked, you know, they have asked these questions also. To prepare historical chronology, that means 
you know to understand about the history how it began how it began and how it came up to this point right so history is connected with all the study of sources only right so you should be very curious to learn about that so one is to pre prepare the historical chronology how the history started to obtain the information about political economic and social affairs i told you there were some literary sources which showed the religious and political information right now do you remember those things there were some buddhist religious texts bodhivamsa tupavamsa datuvamsa those books some political informations were mentioned in books like rajavali right rajavali and some books were like you know other sources like sandesha kavya prashasti kavya in those books also they have mentioned many important information other one to compare the informations on one and other source for example mahavamsa and deepavamsa you can keep them and you can compare though they were written in two different centuries certain informations are similar the reason is they got the support of the same text the same text were influenced i told you know the sihala atakatha mahavamsa uttara vihara atakatha vinaya vinaya atakatha those books were some helpful sources to compile mahavamsa and deepavamsa so we can compare the information and finally to study internal relations because by looking at the foreign literary sources we are able to understand that our country had a foreign relationship also right so foreign relationship can be studied by observing all these uh, foreign literary sources as well is that clear for you? now let's see the questions classified past paper questions 2016 all over now if you do five years of past papers is more than enough okay 2016 to 2020 papers revise and do them that's more than enough for you right you will see that same thing they are repeating they can't change the history ne? right next one to first one to which chronicle was the t kavani one satta pakkasini written when i'm explaining i told you they can ask this name right now one girl also asked me a question so if you ask question or you remember i asked this question from teacher she asked me like that they remember that's why we say ask questions those questions are you know hardly getting settled in your mind so i told you about mahavamsa mahavamsa the annotation of mahavamsa was known as vansatta pakkasini so the answer for the first one is first part of mahavamsa deepavamsa tupavamsa and bodhivamsa those were the buddhist religious books which were uh, belonging to the anuradhapura period to kandian period so when you are doing a question children learn to learn to write the review for that learn okay one is the answer no what about the other three what are those things learn those things that's how you gain your knowledge if you underline the answer mahavamsa just don't neglect deepavamsa tupavamsa and bodhivamsa just know what are they also deepavamsa is the uh, 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 all those books are the books belonging to the literary sources so deepavamsa is something similar to mahavamsa other two books like tupavamsa bodhi uh, who was his bodhivamsa those are the buddhist religious books belonging to anuradhapura era to kandian era like that you have to analyze the question so the second one the ancient literary religious information when you are reading the question carefully read the ancient literary religious informations and chronicles were written on okay so i told you they were written on several places right uh, maybe the yeah all the leaves inscriptions dip ledgers all are like all are like yeah they have written everywhere but the literary religious informations religious informations all those things were written very carefully in the all the leaves turn to page number 2 figure 1.1 you will see the all the leaves in sri lanka those they were belonging to it's an old and period right and you, even you might have seen in movies and all they collect these all the leaves and they open and see the informations are mentioned and the third one from his own experience about the information of kandian kingdom in a book was written by whom now about his own experience when i told you this story also i told it will be very interesting eh, for reading a person's own experience who was that robert knox 
very good robert knox because he was punished for 19 years and he when he was travel escaping only he was writing on then what about baldius what about ribeiro and father quero so baldius he was actually a dutch person a dutch priest and he wrote about sri lanka on the records what he uh, learned when he was as a captain in there right and if you talk about ribeiro he was a portugal national and he was also a captain he served it for the portuguese army and then he wrote several books about sri lanka uh, under his knowledge whatever he heard whatever he saw and all so they are in the book in your textbook they never mentioned by its own experience only for for robert knox they have mentioned by his own experience right next one as a citizen historical knowledge should be used mostly to okay you all didn't read this question now take a little time and analyze this question number 4 and 5 read the question twice and thrice since these are long statements yes okay so the answer for the fourth one as a citizen historical knowledge should be used mostly to why should you use the historical knowledge study the splendor of ancient society that means study the beauty of our ancient society use the knowledge in ancient technology through modernization how can we use ancient technology how they have used the ancient technology through this modernization what we are facing today uh refrain from repeating the faults done in the past again so is history is giving an idea about not to do the mistakes what we have done earlier or to construct the future by understanding the present through the past experience so definitely if it come to your past story also you will build up your future by learning and understanding about your past experiences that's why we say experience is more important than anything right even if you grow up and if you get a job don't think of the salary work and gain the experience learn whatever that you are able to learn don't think about the money that you gain experience is more valuable than what you earn and you understand so answer is constructing the future by understanding the present through the past experiences question number 5 out of the following for what reason the archaeological monuments which is a national heritage of sri lanka have to be protected i told you about archaeological sources why they have to be protected first one because it has be shown it has to be shown to the future generation we have to show them for future people because they reflect the sri lankan identity when you are reading it itself you get goosebumps in your body like yeah we have to show we were also a country from the earlier time it was not born yesterday or today we have to prove that our country was really old and we had great relationship we had we know foreign people they were kings and everything because it is important for the development of tourism because it is able to gain and understand on the activities of ancient rulers so all these are reasons but the main the main reason what we are using for protecting archaeological monuments is to show and to prove the identity of our country answer is number 2 okay right now i'll give you a little time to write the answers from here onwards then we can check how many of you have taken correct answers then you can check yourself how you how much you have listened right try to answer 2017 question so what's the answer what's the answer who found the correct answer 
Mahavamsa, Divamsa, Datuamsa, Bodhivamsa. Anyone who knows the answer? Vamsa. Yes, Deepa Vamsa. Yes, very good, Deepa Vamsa. Right. Now let's go to the next question. So some simple questions are there, right here. Okay, start answering seven, eight, and nine. Okay, right. Now look at this question. A book which has been written by giving priority to the history of Buddhist, the Buddhist Sasana. What is the book? Rajavaliya or uh, Rajarata Nagareya, Nikaya Sangrahaya, Vinayata Katava. What is the book? Nikaya Sangrahaya. Very good. Nikaya Sangrahaya. So it is mentioning about the Buddhist Sasana, the order of Buddhism, right? So it is mentioned in page number two under the uh, local literary sources. We learned it. Very good. Next one. Select the statement. Okay, now we can go for a review also. Rajavaliya. Rajavaliya is including the political information. Okay. Nikaya Sangrahaya about the Buddhist Sasana. And Vinayata Katava, I told you, there were some supportive sources to write Mahavamsa and Deepavamsa, right? So that's nothing called Rajarata Nagare, like it's like, you know, mentioning about the court, the candy, Rajarata Nagare, candy. So it, there's no book mentioned here. Select the statement that is not suitable. Understand now, this is very important. That is not suitable, okay? In relevant to the inscriptions, which are considered as an historical source, which is not suitable to the inscriptions. Okay. Informations given in the inscriptions are contemporary to the events. They are contemporary to the events that occurred during that period. Helpful to confirm the informations given in chronicles. So those inscription informations are helpful to confirm the informations which are in other chronicles also or else could be used to build and build an unbroken political history to prove that there was an unbroken political history to prove about our political history or useful to know the evolution of the Sinhala script. So there is nothing mentioned about the Sinhala scripts like that particularly. So not suitable, not suitable one is, could be used to build up unbroken political history because we had some political history where we failed in some political history, some kings did not rule properly, some failed, some won, there were some uh, matters like that. So this third statement, we can tell as the answer, which is not suitable to the inscriptions 
under historical sources okay next one out of the persons given below what are the answers containing about the persons who arranged reports by visiting sri lanka and studying the information now some of the people they wrote in their own experience but some people they heard about sri lanka and they studied about our country and wrote what is the answer for this is it megasthenes fahian thero ptolemy ibn batuta robert knox and hewson and thero what are the answers b d e b d e okay we'll see fahian thero yes fahian thero he came to india by walking i told you that and he mentioned about the things what he uh, learned about our country in his traveling account so b is okay next one d he said ibn batuta yes ibn batuta's traveling accounts that's how we learn right ibn batuta's traveling accounts fahian thero's traveling accounts and e robert knox he wrote about his own experience so the answer here okay here there's a small mistake this should be e b d b it's typed it should be e so answer is third one other people like ptolemy and all they he is the person who drew the uh, what we call the world map and in his books what kind of things have he mentioned is a greek person is a geographer so he have just mentioned about our country in his world map so that's this is proof that our country was existing right okay so since the time is up now we'll have to end the session but you can get these questions uh, tutored right which consists all the classified past paper questions related to your lesson number 1 2016 to 2020 so essay type questions are also there uh, so since this is seminar session i'm not planning all to keep time and write and all when it come to the permanent class sessions only we'll be having taking time to write and then discuss so anyway my duty is to give you this tutor both lesson number 1 tier tutor and the question tutor both will be sent to the official group if somebody is not there in the official group text me to my number and get the tutor right and try these questions don't keep it safer in the phone try them try the questions answer and see how many answers you are getting correct for short questions mcqs you are getting each two marks for other big questions the marks the, uh, i have given you so you can mark and understand what kind of knowledge you have on the first lesson right okay. other than that the other sessions will be continued every fridays from 7 to 8:30 right you can inquire about the class times and the fees matters and all those things the next session onward i'll be continuing this paper plus i'll be starting the second lesson so lesson wise we are going to go a session that's how we are planning to cover both the books Okay, it's all about the session.